As we continue the journey for the origin of life, we can finally start labeling out some key events in life's history. And that's going to be the topic of this flowchart in this video. So we'll write this down as key life events. And we're not talking about events within our life or anybody else's life, but we're talking about the history of life. Key life events within Earth's history. Specifically, we can look at two different things. One of the most important things to look at when we're describing life events um, is the geologic record. The geologic record is a good way of figuring out when things occurred based off of some hard evidence. The geologic record is a good representation of time. It's a time scale. And this time scale, it's based off of Earth's fossils. A very hard, concrete way of representing time and what occurred when. A couple of different features that we want to look at that help us understand key life events in the history of life um, include the fact that geologic records are based on major events. They're based on major um, and different events include like um, geological of course, major geological um, events. They're also based off of climate, major climate events, climate changes, major biological events even. All of these things, these events that occur are concretely dug into the geological record. The geological record also features something that you should understand, this idea of eons, four eons. There are four basic eons within life that all of life has uh, encountered so far. Currently we're known, or we're known to be in what is known as the Phanerozoic Eon. So we'll write that down. Currently we are in, currently in, and this is spelled Phanerozoic. That's an R right there, Phanerozoic Eon. And we've been in this eon for about um, half a billion years. And within the Phanerozoic Eon, this is a geological record, there are obviously going to be sub-eras. There are actually three eras, they're called. They're actually called eras. Um, and these are all separated by major extinctions. And within the eras, we have periods, and also we have what are known as epochs. So that's our geological record. It's a good way of mapping out what's occurred. And currently, this is where the map is. But also, a good key life event in life's history. So we can say key, um, actually, I want to title this key life history events to keep it a little bit more um, biological focus. Key life history events. Another one is this major, major one. It's known as the first single-celled organism. When did this happen? When did this first single cell, this first unit of life, able to... Was When was this first unit of life born? When did it happen? Um, a good way to understand this is to look at what are known as stromatolites. Stromatolites are not a living thing, but stromatolites are um, rock-like columns so we'll write down rock like columns uh, composed of this is interesting very cool part um, that many people don't understand is that they're actually composed of dead cells um, a dead cell layers let's say so stromatolites are rock-like columns composed of dead cell layers. What does that tell us? How does that relate to the first single cell organisms? Well, what we notice is that stromatolites are full of um, these slimy bacteria. And bacteria are single cell organisms, so they're full of slimy bacteria. What does that tell us? How does that prove anything? This slimy bacteria, actually, what it does is it actually sticks to sediment. So now we're going through several steps right here. Sticks to sediment. And sediment is just another way of saying, let's say, rock. It sticks to the stromatolites. Once it sticks to the stromatolites, it becomes mineralized. And that's our next sort of step here. It becomes mineralized. We can extend this right here. Once it's mineralized, we form a new sort of slime layer. It becomes ingrained within the stromatolite. And once it's ingrained within the stromatolite, 
this whole process repeats over and over and over again. So that's our last one right here. It repeats over and over and over again. So what does this tell us overall? Overall, this point goes on to emphasize the idea that this whole stromatolite layer upon layer upon layer actually dates back 3.5 billion years ago. That's how far it dates back. And what's interesting about 3.5 billion years ago? Where did we get that number? We got that number because that is the earliest point at which we see something like these slimy bacteria form on the stromatolites. Based on the fossil record, based on the geological record, we noticed that about 3.5 billion years ago, upon layers and layers and layers and layers of dead cells, the first sort of life and single cell organisms roughly show up about 3.5 billion years ago. So overall, we can state that the stromatolites, these rocks, this rock formation, stromatolites, provide, I'll say, fossil proof of life. Specifically, not even just life, but when life occurred based on these layers and based on this geological record.